Scenes from the stables of the 3rd Infantry Regiment's case on platoon. Hello and welcome to Meat Week. I'm Brian Spann. We'll have more on the case on, on a special report we'll post on the Meade TV YouTube channel here in the near future. Meanwhile, this week we talk with Fort Meade Senior Commander. April is Sexual Assault and Abuse Prevention Month and some job search news for young and old. These stories and more, but first, at this month's installation town hall, Fort Meade Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland briefed the usual COVID updates, answered a series of questions on housing and infrastructure, and he also gave his estimate on when Fort Meade might return to health protection condition alpha. Barring any additional guidance or any additional requirements the Army places on Army installations, um, I would anticipate a move towards a or a change a significant change in conditions both of those could happen but I would anticipate a return to HPCon Alpha um, occurring sometime um, in the month of May that would be my best estimate right now I'm no one gets to hold me to that um, because a lot can happen between now and then. Uh, we could get different Army guidance. We could get, the conditions could change in the area. Again, be advised that the conditions could change at any time. You can watch a replay of this month's Q&A with Colonel Nyland and Kimbrough Commander Colonel Tracy Michael on our Facebook page. Just click on videos. In other news, BTV and our Fort Meade Declassified podcast crew took a trip to Washington, D.C. this week for our first conversation with Major General Alan Pepin, Commander, Joint Task Force National Capital Region and U.S. Army Military District of Washington. He's also Fort Meade's senior commander. Our number one concern is always people, right? So, because without the people, as I mentioned, whether it's our soldiers, uh, service members, uh, civilians, our families, our veterans, if, if we don't focus on them first, um, then the second part of readiness, uh, installation readiness to support the mission set, um, we're not gonna get very far um, because the, the foundation in all this stuff is people. The, uh, and then connecting to the readiness if we don't have that enduring relationships and partnership. So there's definitely a relationship between Fort Meade and the community. Uh, there's certainly a relationship between the Fort Meade garrison team and myself and my, my staff, and then obviously at my level going out to MCOM. And so it's, this is about multiple chains of relationships that we have shared understanding to get after the priorities. Chris Nile and the team do a great job. The first thing is we know we have, and I mentioned this, we have the reality of, you know, budgets always drive capacity and capability, yes. right? So we have to make sure, you know, we, we get a budget um, and that is, you know, taxpayer money. And so right. we have to make sure we're great stewards of the money we receive. And the money we receive, we're applying it to the right priorities and resources to get after, again, people, readiness, and then again, our, and our kind of, as I mentioned, our readiness to support uh, what may be asked for us from DOD, Northcom, or our service. Get to know more about General Pepin and the command on the next episode of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified. Meanwhile, April is Sexual Assault and Abuse Prevention Month. Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland kicked off the April 1st proclamation signing event. You know, what we've learned over the years in this battle is that it's not enough just to have great leaders who care. We need everyone on the team, we need everyone on board committed to getting us to zero. Zero sexual assaults, zero sexual harassment in our ranks. It requires all of us, and that's why I think the theme for this month's Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Month is so powerful and it's so good because prevention starts with you. The Fort Meade Sharp Office has a series of events planned throughout the month. Stay tuned to all our social media platforms for dates and times. Turning to some job search news, Club Meet is hosting a community job fair Wednesday, May 11th from 11 to 2. There's a free shuttle service from the Army Reserve Center to Club Meet and back. For details, go to the MWR website at me.armymwr.com. MWR is also hosting a youth job fair on Thursday, May 26th at the Mead High Gym from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. It's for ages 14 to 21 and features more than 50 employer booths. Again, go to mead.armymwr.com for more information. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.